gunman opened fire with 23 firearms in his hotel and 19 back at his house, killing at least 59 people and injuring hundreds more. According to his brother, there was no clues he would commit such a horrific attack. No religious affiliation, no political affiliation, no. He, he just hung out or shocked, horrified, completely dumbfounded I know you're about this. So what goes on in the mind of a shooter like this as they shoot at innocent people? Here now to discuss this is Dr. Michael Wellner. He's a top forensic psychiatrist who has personally examined a number of mass killers. Doctor, thank you for being with Good us. Morning. What, what happened? What's going on here? Well, if you want to understand the killer, the most important place to start is with the victims. And what we can immediately um, see is that he had no relationship to the killers. A workplace mass shooter knows his victims. And they want to see the victim, And right? they want to destroy, annihilate the workplace. It's another key point. The family mass shooter knows the family, wants to annihilate the family. The criminal enterprise wants to kill the gang. So it's a stranger mass homicide. And a stranger mass homicide happens for one of two reasons. Either a person acting for a cause or a person acting because he wants to transcend notoriety and kill as many people as possible, like a James Holmes. However, James Holmes, who was the, uh, who was Aurora, the Aurora shooter. Aurora shooter and and you was, worked on that case. Uh, yes. Here's the thing. Shooting for notoriety's sake and nothing more is a young man's crime. And this is a 64-year-old with no dramatic mental illness, no major decline, someone who's intact. I think if we want to understand what's behind the crime, we should look at James Hodgkinson, the shooter of, of Congressman Scalise, because that crime itself was intended to be a spectacle and, and of much bigger scope. Imagine this. What he intended to do, Hodgkinson, was not only kill all of those lawmakers, Republicans. But, but in doing so, we would have had to have special elections to replace all of them. And if it weren't for the security people who, who intercepted him, you had all kinds of congressmen and lawmakers in a dugout, defenseless, who would have been mowed down. My, my point is, a spectacle is either designed to cause some derivative impact or to instigate some cause discussion. So the point is, he's an older man, there's no definable mental history or decline, and yet it happens now. now if there is a cause, there will be a manifesto, there will be a communication with the television uh, or, or other kind of media or social media, it will be out there. If there's nothing to necessarily tie him to a cause, then instigating is enough. And that's exactly what the parallel is with another older man's crime, Hodgkinson, spectacle crime, just like the person who flew a plane into the IRS. People who commit crimes for notoriety alone are young, and he's not. What so, about genetics? Because his dad was on the FBI Most Wanted list, was a bank robber. Well, the, the genetics of psychopathy are, you know, of course, 50 percent we inherit roughly. But in terms of the genetics of, of psychopathy, they may be as important as, as environment. One thing that you want to appreciate about the the uh, Doctor, the I just want to hold on one second. Yeah. We're splitting the screen with the President of the United States. He's arriving at Joint Base Andrews, and he's going to be heading over to Puerto Rico shortly. Of course, you know, he uh, greets the military who escorts him uh, over to Air Force One. Okay, go ahead. Tying into the president, people who commit mass killings of folks that they don't know have to be detached. And he's detached, he's many floors away, he's killing them through a scope, they're dehumanized. Here's the big, here's the big take home in terms of what we can do to prevent. Absolutely people who are gun enthusiasts and who are populists or nationalists in this country are dehumanized, they're demonized. I, I, don't, I travel all over the United States I don't experience hatred. I turn on the television in, in certain media and I see these people demonized. When you have a CBS News executive who talks about um, not having sympathy, the point is his mindset is that they deserve to die. Yes. And so a person who adopts a cause may be otherwise law abiding, but right. he's, he feels righteously justified that the end justifies the means. So we're talking now about gun control because he, he committed an over the top gun crime. Doesn't mean that guns All was right. the ideology. But what I'm saying bit. is it's the idea of instigating okay. and a means to an end with people you dehumanize. All right, let's uh, back Whether up a little Whether it's bit. this or racism. But who are you shooting at? You said look at the target and work your way backwards. That's right. What do country music fans and country music artists represent? It's Americana. It could be guns. 
I'm not suggesting or, that I know the ideology. Look, it could be that he had an issue with Las Vegas. But my, my point is because this is, you know, this is a national event. It's in Las Vegas. But my, my point is cause, cause is, is pointed out by what he says. He's going to either lay it out or, or he's smart enough to know what this would instigate. Otherwise, one can't speculate. What I am saying is when you kill complete strangers and try to kill as many as possible, you're trying to create a spectacle. And when you're not a young person, you've evolved past the immaturity that says, if I kill as many people as I can, people will think I'm somebody. He's more mature than that. Jeff He's Zeleny, lived his life. Jeff Zeleny says that this is, uh, the country music fans for the most part are Republican, and the president, by showing this type of sympathy, is doing something for his base. Does he, are uh, country music fans symbolic of Republicans? Well, I think that CNN's gonna have to answer for how they demonize uh, gun enthusiasts and how CNN actually contributes to mass shooting. Uh, and, and I believe that they do. But that's a side issue. I think, look, the president has a responsibility anytime there's a national disaster, whether it's here or whether it's Puerto Rico, to console the nation. I think what we can do is signify this as disgusting. There are no George Zimmerman's copycats. There are no Donald Sterling copycats. There are no Jerry Sandusky copycats. Why we've demonized them. We don't demonize mass killing enough, and that's why people feel they could do it uh, for a cause. Dr. Wilner, thank you so much for being with us. All right, uh, straight ahead, please.